Hello everybody. In this uh, tutorial for Biopharma Finder, I'm going to show you how you can do intact deconvolution in a high throughput fashion. So this would be um, in the case where you have a well characterized molecule and you've processed say a 96 well plate or you have several hundred um, samples that you would like to screen and, and process. So you can um, do this in Biopharma Finder. This is 3.1, which was uh, released in January or February of 2019. And so I'm just going to demonstrate how you would set up uh, the processing. So go to the intact um, protein analysis. And in this case, I already have added my protein sequence. In this case, it's trexuzumab intact antibody. And um, we have the glycan modifications assigned to the antibody. So this is the intact um, entire molecule. And what um, I like to do in order to uh, define the processing method is I'm going to take a single file and I'm going to set up the processing method with a single file, define my parameters, figure out what I want to use, and then I can apply that processing method to uh, all of the raw files. So in this case, I, I brought in my raw file and I'm going to select the um, native default method and I'm going to hit edit method. Is going to read the raw file and now for this specific data set I do know um, what I want to change it to. Now I would have already um, done this in a manual mode where I can go through and and figure out exactly what I um, want, how I want to process the data. Um, in this case I'm going to use, um, I'm going to change the MZ range to be around the uh, native um, cluster. So this, these are the different glycans for uh, this molecule. If you zoom in you can see it's really nice uh, resolution. Okay, so I have adjusted the MZ range. I'm going to use the source spectrum creation here. I'm going to use average over RT for this example. And I'm going to just average. Now this retention time that I'm uh, selecting will be applied to all of your raw files. So you do want to have it um, to be fairly reproducible if you're going to use the average over RT. Your other option would be to use the sliding window where you could define a time range and then it would um, perform sliding window within that time range. So it would allow you to have a little bit of shift uh, among your raw files if you need to. Okay, and then I'm going to use the respect deconvolution. And I'm just going to adjust uh, the output mass range because I know, um, you know, this molecule, again, well characterized things, you've kind of already figured um, out what the parameters should be. And so I'm just going to um, adjust a few of these. Okay, so once I have that adjusted, um, the identification in this case, I'm just going to leave it set to the defaults. Now this is the reporting that we have. So we do have some pretty basic reporting for um, intact deconvolution that I think um, some of you might not be aware of. And um, so this might uh, allow you to do high volume processing. Um, so you can add um, the different parameters. So you have your sample information, source spectrum deconvoluted. You can add a um, component uh, detailed table uh, to the list. You can add um, source um, component source spectrum for evident plots so we can enable both of these. Um, you can concatenate the reports and you can do some saving. So we have a few, not not uh, extensive options, but we have a few basic options for high throughput. So then we can come here and we can just save this method. So we'll just uh, give it a name. And then we hit finish. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse for all the raw files. So in this case, I only have 10, but you, you can select, I think it's up to several hundred at one time. So I'm going to add those. Okay, and then I'm going to name this experiment. I'm going to say demo, and um, I'll show you uh, what happens with, with the naming of the experiment. Now, when I bring in the multiple files, I want to select the batch mode for batch processing. So what the batch mode means is it's going to process each one of these files individually using the um, protein sequence we select and then the processing method that we also select. So we're going to use this one. And when we do batch processing, you'll notice that we can add it to the queue. So this is going to, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now the other option down here is multi-consensus. So multi-consensus would process the files individually and then it would merge together all the results. Um, so now what the software is doing is it's going through and it's processing each one of these uh, files individually. And you'll notice that it's, it's pretty quick and it automatically um, tags the uh, software with um, a date and timestamp. 
uh, I'm sorry, the software, it automatically um, tags the experiment name with a date and timestamp um, as it goes through and processes the files. Now what's happening, um, let me open up a window browser here so I can show you while this is actually processing. So if we come here and we go to the folder where the raw files are stored, so if we go into that folder, you'll see that um, the reports are being automatically generated as the, pro as the software runs. And so you get a PDF file here, and this shows all the different information. It's kind of, there's a lot of information in here. Let's see if I can zoom it out so you can see it. Um, it's going to give you your sample information, chromatogram parameters. This is the, um, the trace, so we'll know the retention time start and stop. Here's your uh, deconvolution parameters. And this was your identification parameters. And then here is the source spectrum that was used. Okay. And then here's the deconvoluted spectrum. Um, you can narrow in on the display output mass range, and you'll be able to zoom this in a little further if you'd like, so you could actually see um, a little bit clearer what's going on here. But you get um, everything labeled. And then here's the component table, which actually gives you the, the raw results. And down here, you can actually see these are the evidence plots to show the um, the blue lines represent the charge states. So here's uh, this is for this mass, and then these are the individual charge states for that mass on the um, source spectrum. Okay, and so so each one of these you'll have this this uh, information. So again, this is automatically generated as the software is processing it. And then um, there's different uh, pieces of uh, this is a CVS uh, table that you can add as well. And it generates, it just has the raw data. So if you want to open this up, you can catenate for all your files. The raw data is there. And there's also a, um, this is a J uh, JPEG maybe. And this is just an image that you can actually um, save as well automatically. So I just wanted to share this um, easy way to process a large volume of data for the intact with BioPharma Finder. And then of course you also have each one in here individually. So you can open them up and you can take a quick look through the, um, through the software and, and review and interact with the results. Okay, so now now it's interactive. So if you need to go back and query something, you can do that as well. And then you do get the report here inside the software will automatically be generated as well. To give it a second, there you go. You can see the report. So um, just a quick tip. Um, hopefully this will help you with your processing. All right, thank you.